I can hear running water. Can you? Oh, there it is. Just beautiful. Deborah Dickinson here and isn't that beautiful scenery? I'm not going to share with you the trail that I'm on today because it is my real-time location and I've just learned that it's better not to do that but it will be coming up in a video soon of the whole place and you'll get to learn where it is. Today I want to talk to you about shoulder seasons, what that is and what it means to you if you're traveling and some of my blunders from my recent travels in hopes that it helps. Shoulder seasons are that time of year, usually changing of the actual seasons. You know, winter into spring, spring into summer, summer into fall. But as a full-time traveler, or I guess even part-time, it really means going from hot to cooler and cooler to hot or cold. <laughs> and the reason that that is important is because, you know, you've heard that saying, traveling with the weather. It's not always that easy. I recently shared a video with you where we got caught in an ice storm. And man, was that fun. Not. <laughs> but the shoulder seasons are always tricky. For example, I'm going to go from cold to cooler weather. I mean, from hot to cooler weather. So, quartzite. It gets hot there. And so you need to plan on leaving and getting somewhere higher temperature, I mean, higher elevations or up north or both, whichever you're planning on doing. And I'm not talking about shore power right now. We'll talk about that in a minute. And so you can't stay till it gets too hot and you have to allow yourself enough travel time to get to the cooler spot. And in between there can get tricky. And if you are making reservations, like we are doing the New Mexico State Park Passes, and again, I'll tell you where this location is in an upcoming video soon, then you have to also get to those reservations. And that can be tricky because you make those reservations sometimes six months out. Arizona lets you make, make reservations a year out. But let's just say you make them six months out. Well, you're guessing that you know when it's going to get too hot in quartzite, for example, to head to your first reservation. <laughs> we didn't guess so good this year, but there's no way of knowing six months ahead of time. Quartzite stayed cooler a lot longer this year than it normally does, and maybe that's why we ran into that ice storm. But it's also been cooler in the locations where we've gone, but we opted for shore power. And in an upcoming video, I'm going to talk about why I'm not a boondocking snob. Now, I know that that sounds maybe critical, but I hope you'll watch that video when it comes out to see what I mean. So we had reservations and we had to get to them. And when you are doing shoulder season travel, even if you're boondocking, or maybe especially if you're boondocking, sometimes you really have to scuttle and get on down the road to beat the weather. There's been times when I've I had my um, route planned out beautifully and realized that I got there and it was fine, but another winter storm unexpectedly was coming in and I had to hurry up and get down the mountain. Now that's when I was boondocking in my van and I know that I've traveled with people a lot, but if you go back through my videos, you'll also see that I do deep wilderness remote camping by myself and have had plenty of experience in that. That particular time, I had to really run down the mountain and the ice storm and the, the snowstorm was right behind me and I wasn't far from Donner Pass. So I got, I, I judged that shoulder season wrong too. What happened recently is not only the ice storm that we ran into, but because the weather was still cold and uh, we wanted to not come further north to our next reservation because it was still in the 20s for 12 hours a day. Now, even with hookups in an RV, that can burst your lines. And so we don't want to take that chance. So we went 
back south and you'll be seeing that video soon and stayed at uh, Percha Dam and that's where I've been doing a lot of fishing and everything both Frugal RV Gal and I and uh, we waited out that that winter it wasn't a storm it just stayed colder longer than usual in fact while we were at Caballo Lake we had neighbors camp next door to us that were locals and they come there to do fishing and they said that they didn't know what was going on. They're like, by now we're running our air conditioning and getting back from fishing by nine or 10 because it's so hot. And the water temperature was such that you could go fishing in the middle of the day and hoping that it was warm enough that fish were biting. As it was, they weren't catching anything. And they said, usually every day they catch their limit of all uh, three kinds of fish. We didn't catch anything. And so we're not sure what's going on with that. Maybe the fish are having trouble with shoulder season too. But we stayed there and then we started on our trek and, and we were late getting to, um, actually the next place we went was a first come first surf. So we didn't have to worry about reservations and, and we just are not gonna stay here that long and then go on to our next reservation. But I will tell you that one of the mistakes, one of the blunders, not only, and it, it's not really a blunder when you run into an ice storm or bad weather, when you've done all of your planning and everything that you can, but it felt like a blunder. And the next one was, we did an eight hour travel day to get from point A to point B, took eight hours. And that is far too long. That's far too long for anyone, especially someone like me with a brain injury. And it did me in for a few days. In fact, I think I told you guys on Tuesday, it was a travel day. And so I'd have a video up on Wednesday. Obviously that didn't happen. I have not been able to sit down and edit. Um, and so I'm putting this video up to explain to you why and hopefully help you understand shoulder season travel so that you can plan uh, for yourself as well. So we did that. We did that eight hours because we dipped south, remember, to get away from the cold. And then we had to make that up plus get to our next campsite and uh, so that we can make it to our next reservation. So reservations can really hold your feet to the fire, so to speak, in cold, uh, or not cold, but in shoulder seasons. Otherwise, we wouldn't have done eight hours. And plus, we did a Walmart run. So there's lesson actually number three for you. Uh, on travel day, I really shouldn't be doing anything else but travel. As it was between two gas stops and uh, we stopped at Arby's. They had two roast beef sandwiches for $6. And so we each had a um, quick roast beef sandwich and hit the road again. But eight hours on the road was too much for me, too much for Bandit, too much for Ar for Glarvi Gath, and too much for Sammy. And we're recouping, but we get to recoup in a beautiful place like this. And I wrote a Patreon post about how that affected me even mentally. Nature came to my rescue and um, God gave me a wonderful blessing that evening and it pulled me out of my mental state. But traveling too long can mess with you, not only physically, but at least for me, it did mentally as well. So you wanna watch for that. And sometimes in shoulder seasons, it's just not possible. I have traveled four times in the nine years I've been out here on the road longer than planned. One was because my, I always tell you, have a backup plan for your backup plan, but my backup plan didn't work. My backup plan for my backup plan didn't work. And I finally found a place to land for the night. Second was a family emergency. And sometimes things happen and you just have to travel the length of time that you need to travel. And the third time was I needed to get from uh, point A to point B for a, a specific reason uh, to help someone. And I don't regret that at all. And then this time it was because of weather and reservations. And so in shoulder seasons, uh, you never know what's going to come up and you just have to be prepared. I always say, keep your gasoline tank full, never go below half. Keep your inventory of your water tanks uh, full. And if you're traveling, if you're boondocking, like I used to do for five years in my cargo van, just make sure that you have plenty of water on board and it, keep your uh, gray tanks and your RV tanks empty because you never know when you might have to pull over and or get stranded. And same thing if you are boondocking, I always made sure that all of my systems were um, on the go, ready to go, so to speak. And so that uh, is what I do for shoulder seasons, going from hot to cold. Now, obviously the same thing is true when you have found some nirvana, maybe in mountains, because there's two ways to cool off. You go north or you go high, or you do both. 
But um, then you can't stay too long because you can get snowed in. Ask me how I know. <laughs> and so you same thing. And you don't want to take too long uh, getting, you don't want to get somewhere too soon because it might be too hot. It, it's like, um, you know, I, I don't get to quartzite usually before November because it's, for me, too hot. You could pro I could probably get there in October and be okay, but November is when, when I usually do. But if you're traveling and you're leaving cold and you're going to somewhere warmer, you don't want to get there too soon either. And so it can be a guessing game, but you can educate yourself with, I use a bunch of different weather apps and have shared those both when Frugal RV Gal and I spoke at RTR, the Rubber Tramp Rendezvous, and at my Coco Fest meetup. And I will put some of them in the video description down below. But you want to look at extended weather forecast and you want to make sure that you have alternatives in case you have to pull over for a night or two. And that's part of that. Have a backup plan for your backup plan. And so shoulder seasons, why I didn't have a video up this uh, this week and some of my blunders that I've learned from and that I hope you can learn from too. Happy and safe travels out there, everybody. Bando, you want to come say bye to everybody? Come on around. He's out here. He is loving these rocks. Come here, buddy. He is loving these rocks and the water and this trail and having such a good time. And we hope you are too. Keep on keeping on everybody, no matter what, one day at a time. We'll see you down the road.